Today, I'm tackling one of the most ambitious projects I've ever taken on, building a fully functional quadruped robot dog from scratch. This project has been months in the making, so let's take a closer look at the design choices, electronics, and challenges involved in bringing this robot to life. First off, I took heavy inspiration from two YouTube videos which you have probably already watched if you're watching this video. Breaking Tap's video on rolling contact joints and Aid Moose's video on capstan drive. If you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly suggest that you do so. After watching their videos, I couldn't stop thinking about how lifelike and anatomical the rolling contact joint would be for a knee. A simple bearing joint with a single center of rotation just doesn't move the same way as a dual center of rotation rolling contact joint. One difficulty with rolling contact joints is that it's difficult to fit a gear and a motor inside or nearby to drive them. This is where the capsan drive comes in. By using these two concepts together, they create what I think is the most anatomically accurate robotic knee joint. Each main joint operates using capstan drive, but only the knee operates using rolling contact joints. Every joint has a custom PCB with an Arduino Pro Mini as its brains. The Arduino measures the joint's current angle from a magnetic encoder and uses a PID loop to control the power sent to the motors to reach the joint's target angle. The joint controllers receive its target angle and all of their commands over I2C. And I know someone watching this probably just spat when they heard that, but don't worry, every controller board has an I2C booster chip to extend the range to each of the four controlled boards per leg roughly a meter away from the master at the furthest. And at this point, I'd like to thank Will Thayer for designing the PCBs and helping me talk through the control theory and CAD design. He's been a massive help on this project and I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. The brains of the operation will be this Raspberry Pi 5 with its own custom PCB. This PCB has considerations for power distribution for each leg, power for the Pi, a hardware and software I2C bus, and future expandability. The legs will be controlled via the hardware I2C bus, leaving the software bus for future expandability like sensors such as a 6-axis IMU, laser distance sensor, and whatever else I may add in the future. The plan to control the robot dog is to use ROS2, which if you've never heard of that name before, like me, is the robot operating system. I still have yet to use it, and I know that I have an incredibly steep learning curve in front of me, but I'm really looking forward to it. ROS2 is incredibly powerful, and it will handle everything from vision systems to motor control and anything in between. Each leg is built on a four-control joint system. Starting from the top, we have the hip flexor to move the leg in and out, and it's driven by a linear actuator and uses the slim motor controller board. A capstan-driven dual motor hip joint driven by the larger controller board is next. Both boards have the same functionality, but different shapes to allow for different packaging. Next, we have the knee joint and motor group. These were actually the first components I designed for this build and are really the heart of the whole build for me. The last joint is the ankle joint. Every joint has been designed while overlaying them on this graphic of a dog skeleton so that I can set the correct placement, and match the range of motion of a real dog as closely as possible. On to the motors. Controversially, I've decided to use DC motors with planetary gear sets. I know that the standard for animal-like robotics is quasi-direct drive BLDC motors driven by O-Drive or similar motor controllers. My reason for not going this route is firstly cost, and secondly my unrealistic confidence that I can get it to work. So far, I have only assembled and tested a knee joint with this dual motor capstan drive and tested it against my kitchen scale. I was able to measure upwards of 20 pounds of force, but my test setup was incredibly rough to say the least, so that is another project I have to work on in the meantime. And that about brings you up to speed for now. If you want to know more, please visit my website at wilsonfabrication.com where you can find a post going into much greater detail. If you've got ideas for what features should come next, or suggestions for improvements to the control system, drop them in the comments below. Stay tuned for more videos to come soon, going into greater detail about each joint and the testing, and let me know what videos you want to see. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.